Well, we're into the second passage in our 1 Peter series, and today we're seeing that we are hopeful. Last week we looked at the privilege of being a part of God's elect, his chosen ones. And flowing out of that, Peter starts off his letter with this big call to praise. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth. Now, everything that we see in this passage flows out of the mercy um, that God has shown us what God has done for us in his mercy. And what he has done is he has given us new birth into a living hope. And it's that hope that we are going to dig into. But this hope is all because God in his mercy has given us new birth, linking back to what we saw about being a part of his chosen ones. We've been chosen by him, born new birth into his family. We can call God our father And because of this, we now have this living hope. And this idea of of hope is key in this section. Peter refers to the hope we have in a number of different ways. He speaks of it as an inheritance and a never perishing, unspoiling, unfading inheritance. So an always and forever inheritance. He speaks of the inheritance there again. And then... Also, this living hope is speaking of the coming salvation. And this salvation is what links this whole section together, actually. Concerning the salvation and the prophets were looking ahead to the glories that would follow. And all of this is linking what it means to be hopeful. Uh, We are hopeful today, which we'll look at in a moment, but we're also hopeful because of what has been secured for us in the future. The coming of the salvation, the salvation of our souls. This is the salvation that the prophets were looking ahead to. And it's this salvation that has been secured for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, In His great mercy, He's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And Jesus really is the one in focus in this section. Um, We want all the praise and glory and honor to go to Jesus when he's revealed. Um, It is the spirit of Christ who is speaking to the prophets, pointing them ahead to the salvation that is now ours, um, telling them about the sufferings of the Messiah the promised one, the Christ, and the glories that would follow. The interesting thing that Peter tells us about our salvation here is it is a salvation that is now ours. We have this living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So that has secured our salvation, but he speaks of it as the coming salvation, the salvation of your souls, the glories that would follow. So it's it's looking ahead to a salvation that's coming, Peter says that it was revealed to the prophets that they were serving not themselves, but you. So to us as the chosen ones, the ones who have this living hope. And Jesus has been revealed to us, but we are also now waiting for the time when Jesus will be revealed again. At the end of time, when praise, glory and honor will be fully given to Jesus. Um, Peter says that it is ready to be revealed in the last time, this coming salvation. And Peter starts by saying, praise be to the God and Father. And it is this God who we're told here, his power shields us until that day of salvation. As we look ahead to this living hope, this insure, this inheritance, this salvation that is coming. We know that it is God who has secured that this, it is God who will keep us. And then Peter transitions in the next couple of verses. From verse 6 through to verse 9. So there's a break here. This first section is talking about how we have this living hope, this new birth. So we are born with hope. But then Peter speaks about the fact that we are going to suffer. 
He calls us to suffer with joy in this section. And lastly, we'll see how we are incomparably privileged. But in these verses, Peter speaks about suffering grief in all kinds of trials. So although we are being shielded by God's power until the coming salvation, we don't go through this life without any suffering. It says, though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These, talking about the sufferings, have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So what Peter is telling us here is that our trials, the, the grief that we suffer, actually works as a purification, proving those whose faith is genuine and those whose faith is not. And actually our trials should be something that grows our hope. We're looking forward to this day when we receive our final inheritance, when our salvation is fully and finally given to us, when suffering and trials will be a thing of the past. And until that day, these sufferings show whose faith is genuine and whose is not. Peter does an interesting little link here. He says, we rejoice, though now for a little while we suffer grief. And then he goes, though, though you have not seen him, you haven't seen Jesus, you love him. And even again, though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Joy is a theme that comes out of this middle section. In this you greatly rejoice. So the, this there is pointing back to the living hope that is ours. And we rejoice in that. And then he speaks about us being filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Again in verse 8. And this rejoicing, this joy is all in the face of suffering and trials. Suffering and trials which all show whether our faith is genuine or not. Through faith, we are shielded by God's power, even through the suffering. The suffering shows if our faith is genuine. And for those who believe in him, they are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy because we know that in the end, the, the end result of our faith is the salvation of our souls. We are heading to a glorious final inheritance. So we are born with hope. We are able to suffer with joy. And these verses show us how we are incomparably um, privileged. This salvation that has been revealed to us, the salvation that is ours because of Jesus, but that we are longing for to be fully and finally given to us. The prophets looked with longing for this. But they were told, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. The Old Testament prophets were serving us as they spoke about these things that were still to come. The sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. So we serve a suffering Messiah who is now in glory. And we as those who suffer now are heading to glory. And that's what the prophets were looking ahead to. They wrote about it. They were serving us as they wrote this. And then the, this last phrase here, even angels long to look into these things. What Peter is saying here is that we are in an even more privileged position than the angels. We have the salvation that, uh, that the angels marvel at. They stand in awe at what God has done for us. And the angels are God's spirits, uh, serving uh, they are God's servants, where we, as God's people, are his children. We call God our Father. We are in an infinitely more privileged position. And it is because we are those who are the recipients of this salvation. A salvation that has been secured through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It's an inheritance that can't be taken away. It is it can't be destroyed, it can't be polluted, it won't, it's not subject to decay. It will 
continue forever and ever. It's being kept in heaven by God. And God's not only keeping our inheritance, he's shielding us until the salvation. He will get us till the, to the end. But that doesn't mean that we won't face suffering. We will face suffering in this life. But we can face this suffering with joy because we know what's coming. We know what Jesus secured for us in the past. And we know that he's alive. He's resurrected from the dead. And so we serve him with joy now. And we know what's coming. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The prophets longed to see what is a reality for us. The angels look in wonder at what is a reality for us. And as we dig into this truth of the hope that is ours in Jesus, it should give us something firm to hold on to in days that often feel hopeless. We need to remind each other of this hope. And it's probably worth pressing our own hearts and those who we're teaching and asking, what are the things that cause us to lack hope or to forget our hope? And how can this picture that Peter has given us here help to grow our hope? Well, we are hopeful. It's all because of Jesus, it's because of what he's done. And we are headed to an inheritance that is imperishable, a salvation that is coming. And we can live now in the face of trials and sufferings with great joy because of Jesus. Well, God bless as you dig in further.